kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Water Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the Honolulu Desperados relocation franchise here on Madden 24. It's a somber episode today, not only because we're going to be losing some very valuable, very important pieces to the team, but also because in the last episode... We just we just didn't have it in us. We lost in the NFC was it the NFC divisional round or was it the NFC championship? I think it was the NFC divisional round because we weren't the one seed obviously. So, I think it was the NFC divisional round against was it the Eagles? Did the Eagles take us out? I can't remember exactly who we lost to, but we did unfortunately lose. So, the dynasty does take a little bit of a hit. But it's not by any means over for the Dynasty. The Dynasty's not washed by any means. It's just a little bit of a hiccup. You can't win the championship every year. So today, we tried to reload for a new run in Season 8. I can't believe we're already headed into Season 8. But this Season 7 offseason is going to be very interesting. I hope you guys go and enjoy. If you do, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Let's get started. So if you're curious about the season recap or anything like that, you can go and take a look at the last episode. At the end of it, we took a look at all that kind of stuff, all that goodies. So let's get right into the end of the episode. Let's get right into the off season. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how many people are leaving. I don't know who we're going to bring in to replace those people. It's going to be a wild episode. That is for sure. Wild episode. So as you can see, we have basically negative 40 million in cap room, and I've mentioned this time and time again. We are going to be letting these guys go. We're not going to be restructuring any contracts to bring anybody back. We're going to just be writing out the contracts that we have established already and then start anew once those contracts have run out. The major guys are Micah Parsons, Devontae Smith, and Jalen Waddle. And Greg Rousseau, Greg Rousseau I guess. Jalen Waddle and Rousseau being guys that will be gone after next ep or next season season eight but all these guys are in their 30s now they're still very good as you can see Micah Parsons is still a 99 overall but I want to start fresh I want to start with a new team some new players build some new legacies put some new jerseys up in the rafters put some new people's names in the the ring of honor because we've already got Parsons we've already got Smith we've already got Robinson we've already got Waddle these names are already going to be in our Hall of Fame, in our Ring of Honor. I want to put some new names up there. So we'll see what we do with that once these guys are out of their contracts. And then as far as the quarterback goes, Mr. Jonathan Young, man, he won a Super Bowl in his rookie season. And then last episode, his sophomore season, the questions could be raised, is he the guy? Is he the guy that can take us to the promised land consistently? I mean, we're still going to ride with him, obviously, because we don't have really any other option. I'm not going to go to Andrew Martin. But we will have to figure out what we can do to put around Jonathan Young to make him the best quarterback that he can be. But unfortunately, we are going to have to say goodbye to Ramon Jenkins, to Brian Hayden, to Reggie Chambers, Jordan Battle, Antonio Curtis, Demarius Whitfield, Kashim Livingston, Deshaun St. Clair, Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, and Darian Slayton. A lot of these guys that I drafted not too long ago. These are their rookie contracts, and now they, they want max extensions, and I just simply don't have the money to pay those max extensions. So we can say goodbye to all of those talented young players. They're going to go get their bags on new teams. So now that leaves us. We obviously can't do anything in free agency. That leaves us with a weird team. Our center is going to be not. He's going to be our center over Hunter. Our right guard position is in mass. Actually, I could have Hunter play center and then have not play right guard. We'll figure out what we do in the draft. If we draft a right guard that's good, then we can obviously just make them the right guard. Or I could just make Chamberlain the right guard. Although he's already the left guard. I can't do that. I didn't see him there. 
Um, we'll see what we do in the draft. If we draft a right guard that's better than Gray and better than not, then we'll figure out what we're going to do. Or maybe we draft a center. There's a couple different ways we could go. We'll figure it out, though. We will figure it out, though. Uh, still no development upgrade for Jonathan Young. I really want him to be a superstar development player, but he's just not getting there. And then on defense, we desperately need a middle linebacker. We have good outside linebackers. We don't have a lot of depth there, though. We desperately need a middle linebacker. I guess I could move Wilbon to middle linebacker. Is he already a middle linebacker? I could have sworn. Oh, okay. He's just a right outside linebacker. We could move him to right out, or to middle linebacker, pair him up with Ingram, and then have Will Booth play on the outside with Herrera. That's a possibility. We'll figure it out. We need safeties bad, though. We need safeties bad. We need a, a couple corners. We need D tackle again. There's a lot of stuff we got to do with this team. We'll see what we we'll see what we can get managed to do. But there's a lot of holes on this team now with all those guys going away. But we'll keep a track of some of our big. Wow, Mahomes actually made it to free agency. I think that's the first time I've ever seen Patrick Mahomes make it to free agency. Alexander is here. Brian Burns is here. Quentin Nelson's here. There's a lot of good guys here. A lot of talented players. But we'll keep an eye on some of our big name free agents that we let go. See where they uh, see where they end up, and also see where Patrick Mahomes <laughs> ends up. That's going to be a a very interesting one. All right, let's get to the let's get to the draft or get past period one of free agency. I guess I don't even know what our draft picks are. All right, free agency. Where did everybody go? So Mahomes didn't sign anywhere. Nobody signed any. Okay, a couple guys signed there. Ramon Jenkins now plays in Cleveland, so he goes and joins Anthony Richardson, as if they didn't need any more help. Uh, Brian Hayden now plays for the Saints. Who else is a guy? Okay, so those are the only two guys from our team that signed new contracts. Man, the Browns just want to take all of our guys, don't they? They just want to take all of our guys. Let's simulate another period here. And see if, see if the uh, other players that are waiting for free agency, if they sign somewhere. I don't want to go to the scouting. I want to go to free agency. There it is. Let's view free agents. So Jair Alexander, he signed with Cleveland too. Only on a one-year deal, but he goes to Cleveland. Ramon Jenkins also in Cleveland. Uh, let's see. Denzel Ward goes to Denver. Quiddy Pay signed with Cleveland. Evan Neal signed with Cleveland. They are loading up, ladies and gentlemen. The Cleveland Browns are ready for another Super Bowl trip. They made it to the Super Bowl a couple years ago when they lost us. That's crazy. They're going out, all out for a Super Bowl run. But it doesn't look like any more of our guys are signing. At least not that I notice. Yeah, I think only Ramon Jenkins and, and Brian Hayden are the guys that signed him. Matt, Patrick Mahomes still has not signed a contract yet. I wonder where he's going to be playing quarterback. It's probably not going to be for the Kansas City Chiefs, that's for sure. Which is just going to be weird. I've, I, Like I said, I don't think I've ever seen a, a series where or a, a free agent period where Mahomes signed somewhere else and he just goes back to Kansas City on a one-year deal. Of course. Brian Burns ends up in Dallas. The Saints get Quinn Nelson. Then they already signed... They already signed Brian Hayden, so they got their left guard and their right guard, I guess. Whatever. But he just he goes back to Kansas City, so he's still going to be in Kansas City for another season. That's kind of funny that that uh, he made it through free agency and still signed with Kansas City. All right, so Shaquem Newton we know is a top five talent, but I just don't think I'm going to be in position to be able to get him. Spencer Sally is also amazing. I kind of want Spencer Sally. And Andrew Cordova also looks really good. But we need guard or center. So we need to take a, a little look at here. There could be some guys here. These top three guys look decent in their, their actual stats. But I think I might be more curious about some of these other guys. The right guard spot. The right guard spot doesn't look as good as the left guard spot. How good is Justin Atkinson? And then how good is one of these centers? Let's look at let's look at Trey Lynch, the top center in the class. So Spencer Sally, Tr Justin Atkinson, Trey Lynch. Those will be my three private workouts. Do we I don't think we have any multiple picks, do we? I don't think we do. Did I already spend on my I already have the staff thing bought out, right? Okay, perfect. I thought I did. Just wanted to make sure. All the different series, all the different rebuilds kind of blends together. Can't remember exactly what I've done on each thing, so. 
Let's get to the mock draft. Let's find out where everybody's going and find out what our pick even is. It's probably going to be in the low 20s, high teens, I would think. Mock draft number five. Spencer Sally's a top five talent. He's going number one. Then Shaquem Newton's a top five talent. He's going number five. Okay, and then we pick at 25. They want us to take Victor Dorsey. I don't really want to do that. I don't really want to take Victor Dorsey. I know we need a D-tackle badly. We need a D-tackle. But we also need offensive line, and we could even use a receiver. Like, Shaquem Newton could be the replacement along with Lynn Lashley. His speed isn't amazing, but he looks really good. He's got all the, the things you want. Plus, he's physical. He's a 6'2". He's a big body guy. He's got a deep route running. He can even block pretty well. He's a great dual threat receiver. But then you got you got freaking Spencer Sally, who's the number one overall pick, who looks unbelievable. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Injury doesn't matter because injuries aren't on. That is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a, a left tackle with all A's like that. That is unbelievable. That's a generational left tackle. That is a generational left tackle. That's crazy. A generational left tackle is right there for the taking. But I don't think there's a way that we can get him. We just don't have the, the pick equity. I mean, I could just trade up one for one a couple of times. I guess. Maybe. Who has pick number 23? Pick number 23 is held by the Rams. If we could swap picks like that, that's perfect. Now remember, I say this all the time. As long as you have the staff tree, the thing that I showed you earlier, the player personnel trading side of the staff tree, If that, as long as that's all bought out and all maxed out, you can basically trade one for one on first round picks up to a certain point. It kind of gets weird when you get up to like the top five, top three, obviously. But you and that's on normal difficulty, normal trading difficulty. So you could basically do that. Which I've shown plenty of times over the the rebuilds that I've done on the channel. So now we have pick 23. We can get up to pick 21 if I find out who has it. It is held by a team called the Jets, right? Yep, the Jets. Okay, so. We'll swap with them. They have picked 21. Now, we have picked 21. And if we use that pick, we can flip that pick. Flip. And we can get up to pick number 19, which is held, I think, earlier off, right? There's pick 18. Pick number 19 is held by the Commanders. All right, swap with me there. Perfect. Washington gives me pick number 19. And then we can get pick number 17. I don't know who has pick number 17, but we can get pick number 17. Number 17 is the Bills? No, it was the Bengals. Bengals have pick number 17. Thank you very much. All right, we're already into the almost top 15, but we will be into the top 15 with this next trade. It's just a matter of how far do I want to go? How far do I want to go? Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Do I want to go all the way to one? It's going to cost me a lot if I want to go all the way to one, that's for sure. It's going to cost me more than just a one for one. But now we're into the top 15. We have entered the top 15 of the NFL draft, but we got to go even further. We got to go beyond. We got to go plaid. Who's got pick 13? Lucky number 13 is held by the Jaguars. Thank you very much. And now we can get to pick number 11. I think I've seen number 11 around. Who's got pick number 11? That we know the Bears have 10. 11 is held by the Chargers. Thank you for doing business. All right, we're about to be into the top 10 of the NFL draft this year. About to be in the top 10 of the NFL draft with pick number nine, which is held by a certain team the Chiefs. All right, they just re-signed Patrick Mahomes, but now they have pick number 11. Congratulations. Top 10 pick for the 
Honolulu Desperados, but we might even go a little bit further. Test the limits. How far can we go? Pick number seven. Who's got it? Number seven. Falcons. All right. There we go. Number five next. I think was the Packers? Did the Packers have number five? Because I think they were they were projected to take Shaquem Newton. I'm pretty sure the Packers have pick five. I guess we can find out. Do the Packers have pick five? That's the Panthers. They do have pick five. There we go. A top five pick for the Honolulu Desperados. Can we go further? Can we go any further than pick five? I'll try for pick three. I don't know if it's going to be possible. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's, oh, it's just barely. See, this is when it gets a little tricky. It's just barely there. I can give you my seventh round pick this year. And that's declined. Okay. Um, I can give you my seven for the next two years. How's that? Just barely declined. Okay, I can give you three sevens. Three sevens, my final offer. There we go. Now we have pick number three, and I think, I think that's as far as we can make it. Unless we want to give up even more assets than just one for one. We were able to trade from pick 25 to pick number three. I don't think I can get to pick number two. I just don't, I don't think without giving up a lot. 49ers have pick number two. One for one? No. We have to give up a lot more. Pick number three is as far as we can make it, well, at least as far as I'm willing to go. I could trade more to get up. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get the number one player in the class, which is that tackle. Unfortunately, because he looks unbelievable. Spencer Sally's generational for sure. But now we can't trust the mock draft because I've shaken up basically all the odd-numbered draft picks. So we can't trust anything that we see here now. We have the number three pick. I guess we'll just see how it plays out. I could be taking Shaquem Newton. I could be trading down. You never know. Maybe I trade it all the way up here. Just trade back down. You never know. Let's start drafting and find out what happens. Number one overall pick is going to be that generational tackle. It is. I was hoping and praying he would slip down to number three. He does not. He goes number one overall as he should have. Then Matt Wilson goes. And now we're up. We could take Shaquem Newton. I would be happy with that. We could take the second best tackle in the class, which is Andrew Cordova. Cordova. I would also be happy with that. What do I want to do? Let me, let me, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't take a look at what the trade offers were. So we can trade down to pick number 19 and get a 20, uh, 2032 first round pick. We can get two first round picks, including one from this year from the Bills. So it looks like everybody's willing, oh, no, not the Cleveland Browns. I was going to say, everybody's willing to give me at least one pick from this year. But pick number three is valuable. Not as valuable, obviously, as number one. No, I'm not I'm not shocked by that. The Raiders are giving me a good offer. They're giving me a first, a second, and a third this year, and a fifth, plus a first next year. That could be very useful. We do it, we would have to move down to 28, which we would miss out on a lot of the talented players in this class, including Shaquem Newton. But that Raider selection is not, not bad at all. That's about the best offer I'm seeing. I mean, yeah, we could trade down a little bit, but we're not really getting that much back in return. So it's not really worth it. This Raider pick, I mean, they're giving me a first, a second, a third, and a fifth, all from this year. They're giving me a first in 2031, which is next year. And then they're giving me a seven in 31. So that doesn't really matter. But they're giving me a lot of uh, picks this year which aren't going to be great because they're at the back half of the draft because they're, they were good this year. But moving back to 28, did I really trade all this way up? Did I really trade from 25 to 3 just to trade back to 28? Yes, we are getting back a lot of capital that we didn't have originally, but Shaquem Newton's available, Cordova's available. Do we take a risk and hope that the Raiders are bad next year? And hope that the draft class is good next year in positions where we would need. We know that they're going to have good tackles. The Madden auto-generated classes always have good tackles. They always have good corners. They always have decent linebackers. 
receiver not necessarily every single time so that's one that i'm a little bit intrigued about that's the only thing holding me back from doing this trade right now otherwise i would do it pretty much immediately but the fact that shakeem newton's on the board he's a top five talent we know that for a fact that he is one of the top five best players in this class but that's on a scale of how good the class is as a whole we don't know how good this class is he could be a 77 he could be a 75 he could be an 80 like well, i don't know what the scale is we know that cordova is probably a 79 or an 80 or maybe even higher so that helps the scale a little bit but do i trade pick three do i trade pick three for a lot of draft picks this year for a first basically i'm trading for a first round pick next year and a couple things for this year but the real key is that first round pick from next year that would give us obviously two one being our own we haven't really been in a situation in this series where i've had multiple first round picks every year it's usually just been my own first round pick do i want to prioritize having guys that are good now because we know shakeem newton we can probably grow into being a really really good receiver or do we want to take that risk oh man this is this might be one of the toughest choices i've had to make in this series mm. what do i want to do what do i want to do Do I take the trade or do I take the player? Let me take one more look at how good Shaquem Newton is. Let me just let me just see him one more time. He's 6'2, he's 22 years old, physical archetype. If he had good if he had good or great or even obviously elite would be amazing but if he had good or great on his speed acceleration and agility then it'd be a no-brainer obviously i would take him he did run a 4-4 but that was 19th in the in the class so that means there's a lot of fast receivers in this class he's got elite strength and elite jumping he looks like an unbelievable player he's got all the a's where you want them to be he's got him in catching traffic medium route run he's a great route runner he's a great catcher of the football well he's a good catcher of the football he's a great blocker this is tough i'm just, i'm trying to picture like him and lynn lashley together is that a dynamic duo to replace Devonte smith and jalen waddle or maybe there's going to be somebody somebody else Maybe we can find a receiver next year who's maybe even better than Shaquem Newton. You never know. Oh, Shaquem looks really good. He does look really good. But I think the long-term goal is the best option. I'm going to take that Raider trade. We're going to move down to 28. Unless this is better? No, this isn't better. I'm going to take that Raider trade. We're going to get a first-round pick next year. Hopefully the Raiders are bad. And we've accepted it you gotta look for the long-term future the next pick is shakeem newton so the raiders trade up to three to get shakeem newton we will look in the draft recap and see what we missed out on see how good he actually is cordova goes to the buccaneers let's just skip right to my pick at 28 i am gonna draft somebody because we do need to draft players but now we have now we have some draft capital to work with We've got multiple picks now. We've got two seconds, two thirds, two fives. So we've got some depth. Got some depth to work with. It's a lot of quarterbacks left on the board. Some running backs. The receivers. I mean, the receivers, he was 19th in the class. This guy ran a 4-3 and he's only third. But is that third remaining in the class or is that third overall? He ran 4-5. He's also six foot five. This Austin Ferguson guy. I don't know. We need defensive tackle and we need guard. Atkinson's still here. Trey Lynch is still here. 
Who was the other guy that I did? Oh, it was Shaquem Newton. That's right. Justin Atkinson, I need a guard. You might be my guy. You look pretty good. I'm going to take you. Justin Atkinson, he has development train. Thank God. Justin Atkinson, welcome to the squad. We can always move you to, to center or to um, right guard. It's not a big deal. All right. So now we pick again at pick 25. Thanks to the... Uh, actually, that's our own pick. <laughs> I was going to say thanks to the, the Raiders, but that's our own pick. How's the centers looking? Is Trey Lynch still available? Ah, Trey Lynch isn't available, but Chris Hoffman, who did look pretty good, to be fair. Looks actually really good, to be fair. But I don't want to take him here, because I think he might be around in the third round. Delonte Taylor. Not somebody I thought would still be here. But I don't want to take him. Not in the second round. Not in the second round. Uh, defensive line, Sean Bishop. Is Sean Bishop good? He's got poor speed. Nah. Eh, I don't like it that much. We do need a D tackle. We got no D tackle depth. Ricky Reynolds looks like a good athlete. A power move, B finesse moves, B awareness. I'm feeling it. No, oh, normal development. Okay. But we need D-Tackle, and if he's higher than like a 67 or something, he should be able to start. So, who knows how good he's going to be. Now that we have the Raiders pick, we can either take this guy, Eli Downing. A block shot, A play rec, A hit power. Eli Downing doesn't look half bad. And then there's Delonte Taylor again. If Delonte Taylor makes it to the third round, then I might consider him. I don't think I can take him in the second round. He just doesn't look like a second round player to me. And that's just because I don't know exactly how good he is. He's not the greatest athlete. He looks pretty average. Like, I don't know what his run block... We didn't scout him enough to know what his run block and stuff is. So, if he's there in the third round, I'll take him. Or I'll consider taking him. But I don't think I can do that now in the, in the second round. I think I'm going to take this Eli Downing guy. I wasn't really considering him, but now that I look more light, more at him, he's got elite strength. The A hit power, the A block shed really intrigues me. He's probably normal development, but I'm going to take a flyer on him. He is normal development. 93 strength, though. He looks big. He's 6'6", 318. Maybe he's our D-tackle. <laughs> Maybe he, we move him to D-tackle. He ends up being better than the guy that we just took. Who knows? But now we get to round three, pick 25, and I got to see if that center's available. Hopefully he is. The center is still available. Chris Hoffman, welcome to the squad. He also has a development trait. It's probably only star, obviously, but that's huge because the guy that we have there previously doesn't have a development trait. So we're hitting big on the offensive line. I like that, which is the, one of the main needs we, we needed to grab. Luckily, we have 95% on all the wide receivers, so Pass Juice did a good job on, on picking the right thing but it's just a matter of finding the right guy and i don't think there's anybody else that's really that good Tavares peoples 511 with solid speed no nah, i think we might have might have ran the well dry on the wide receiver market here in this draft it might just not have been that great of a wide receiver class in general that's okay not, they can't all be winners then we get to the cornerback room and you got this guy right here Dwayne mcculler 6'2 with a man coverage and a press He's got D zone coverage, but he's 6'2". He's 23 years old, though. Dwayne McCullers is interesting. That's a very weird prospect. I like it, though. I like it. What about Henry Nelson? 6'4", 241. Decent athlete. A pursuit, A stamina, A man cover. Or don't know what his man coverage is. Could be A. Hmm... Dwayne McCullers, this is our final pick, yeah, until the fifth round. So Dwayne McCullers and this middle linebacker will both be gone by the time we come back up. So who do I want more? I probably want Dwayne McCullers. I know that's probably bad because he's got F catching and D zone coverage, but he's 6'2", he's a decent athlete, and he's got hidden development, so I'll take that. 90 speed, 87 acceleration, 86 agility. All right, that's a, that's a solid pick. It's a pretty solid pick. 
But now we don't come up again until the fifth round, so a lot of the talent's going to be off the board. I don't even know if there's going to be any talent on the board. Two picks here in the fifth round. Paul Spriggs is still... He must be a super bust. Round two to three. B pre yeah, he sucks. <laughs> He's garbage. And Tavares Peoples is still... Good thing I didn't take him. He's still available. Oh, there can't be anybody left, right? There's, there's no talent left on this board. There can't be. Everybody else has got to suck. Zach Foote? Kind of a legendary name, but he's he's not worth He's going to be a super low overall. Travis Coleman? Didn't go to the combine. Okay, respect. But he doesn't look good. And then you got Paul Spriggs and then a bunch of, bunch of garbage. Hmm, man, there's not a lot on the table, is there? There is not a whole lot left. Chad Bryson, 6'4", blocking tight end. He looks good blocking, that makes sense. Jonathan Woodard, great speed. Do I take a tight end in the fifth round? I mean, we're going to lose Fryermuth at some point. Jamal Dixon, elite acceleration. He can't run a route to save his life. What is he good at? <laughs> Just being fast? He's only got, he ran 4'4". Four, four. Jamal Dixon is intriguing simply because he's fast. He's 5'11". He's going to have normal development. I'm going to take him. 92 speed, 97 acceleration. This is a weird prospect. Out of Indiana State of all places... The Sycamores, okay. What a weird prospect, but he's fast, and he's our replacement for Shaquem Newton. Where do we go next, though? I kind of want to take a tight end. I know that I probably shouldn't because they're all going to be bad, but we're going to lose Fryermuth at some point, so we got to have a backup, and maybe our backup is here. Maybe it's Mario Bankston. The bank is open for Super Mario? I mean, the legendary name. You can see it already written in the stars. Super Mario. Bank is open. And that was our final pick. That was a weird draft. That was certainly a weird draft. I think we came out with enough talent to not feel too bad. 73 for Atkinson. 73 for Reynolds. 74 for Downing. Does he go up? I'm curious. Does he go up? when we turn him to a D tackle or does he just stay the same or does he go down he goes up I thought so he looks more like a D tackle he's a 77 he will be our new D tackle Hoffman's a 73 McCullers is a 73 Dixon's a 69 but he's super fast and then 67 for Bankston okay that's a that's a fine draft for picking at 28 I'd say that's a fine draft indeed now let's go see how bad I did they're both an 80 Spencer, Sally, if you have superstar development, I will cry. <laughs> oh no, he's generational. He's so good. He's so good. But I just didn't have the assets to get up there. And what about Newton? Please do not have anything more than star. Please, for my sanity. I can't miss out on two great players. Thank God. Oh, my! I thought for a second it was going to say X-Factor and I was going to cry to sleep tonight. So he only has star, but he's a really good player. I knew he was going to be great, but there's only two 80s and then drops down to a 77, which we got with, technically, with Eli Downing. Okay, it's not. it wasn't the greatest class in the world, but I wanted both these guys. We didn't end up with either of them. We could have ended up with Newton, and I would have been happy with that. I would have been amazing. It would have been amazing to have an 80 overall receiver right off the gates, but we got to prioritize the future. We got to prioritize the future. We can't go right into trying to build this team back up to a champion when we're not really there. You got to think realistically there. We're not really a champion. So Atkinson, I'm just going to move him straight to right guard so that it doesn't even mess around. He's just going to get straight to right guard. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Big dog, you're a right guard now change that and now hunter is a 76 not as a 76 
Hoffman's a 73. I'm going to start not at center over Hunter. So the offensive line's looking really good. Then at wide receiver, we're going to start Britton at f number four. And then obviously we got Young, we got Bijan, we got uh, Fryermuth. Bankston's actually a 72 overall fullback. That's weird. <laughs> I'll take it, but that's a weird thing. And then on the defensive side of things, we need to figure out the linebacker spot. I think I am going to do what I was talking about. I'm going to move Wilbon to middle linebacker. I wanted to take that middle linebacker that was in the third round, but then I took McCullers the corner. So we'll move Will Bond to middle linebacker. He will play there. And then Will Booth and Herrera will play outside linebacker. Safeties are going to struggle. We could start Allen at safety, but he's already like our third string corner. So I guess that's not the smartest idea. Mm, what should I do? Although we have... If we had more corner depth, I would do that although I might I think I'm gonna switch Allen we're gonna switch to Juan Allen and we're gonna turn him to a safety probably a strong safety we'll turn him officially into a strong safety then he starts right away then that gets McCullers up a little bit which is good but I could also move Jones to free safety but I don't know how our quarterback depth where it looks then let me just do it let me just do it and then figure it out. So Dante Jones, we make you a strong, a free safety. What does the cornerback depth look like? Then it brings up Barnett at 69. I mean, it gets McCullers to play a little bit more, so that's good. But do I, do I go with that? Do I go with that? I, I'm definitely going to go with Allen at, at strong safety. But do we make Jones our free safety? Yeah, why not? I mean, it gets Barnes a little bit more playtime, so maybe he has a breakout season. Who, kn who knows? We'll keep it like that. We'll keep it like that. The offense looks good. Defense is a little shaky. A little shaky, but we look good. It's going to be a weird season eight, that's for sure. I don't know how good we're going to be. I don't even know if we'll make the playoffs. I think we will because of just the pure talent that we have with like Micah Parsons, Fryermuth, Bijan, that guy in a great offensive line. So I think we will make the playoffs, but you never know. We could miss out. That that's possible. We also have to hope that the Raiders are very bad, too, because we have their first-round pick. So, hope you guys enjoyed this offseason episode. It was very controversial. Some things I did, maybe you guys didn't like. Maybe you guys did like. I don't know. But we'll find out. Uh, next episode is the start of Season 8, and we'll see where this team goes from there. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the G-Scope. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.